Welcome back, friends. When starting a new business, tracking your financial performance is critical to making good decisions and succeeding. And while there are many good out-of-the-box bookkeeping and accounting systems out there like Quicken, these cost money and they take a lot of time to set up. A lot of times you end up reducing their capabilities just to get something that's functional for a new startup business with very few transactions, less than say 100 transactions a month. So to help out new startup businesses that I've worked with in the past, as well as some of my own small businesses, I've developed a very simple Excel-based accounting and bookkeeping system to track these transactions. In this video, I'm gonna walk through how I set up this very simple system, starting with a blank Excel workbook. Let's get started. Start by opening up Excel. Once Excel is opened, going to rename this tab by double clicking on it. We're going to call this tab transactions. Now we'll just type in date. Once we have the date set, well, let's type in the description. These are going to be our main columns. So let's move these down and give us the, uh, the first row empty so that we can give categories to our assets, like uh, to our accounts, like assets. So within assets, we have cash, receivables. Uh, we'll put inventory, I don't think I'm gonna use it. The equipment, and then we'll have some liabilities in here. We'll just call this the equipment, equipment loan. For now, now we're gonna put in our equity account, which this is, we're just gonna assume basically the kind of like sole proprietorship or small side business. So uh, that's our just generic equity account. We have our revenue and expenses. We'll have a basic sales account, just one. And then we'll use maintenance expense for the time being. And then also just an other. I'm not sure what expenses we're going to have yet. I haven't developed the company. So give room for the description. Spread everything out. We'll center assets, center the assets over. Uh, just merge those cells so that it kind of centers out over those areas. And then let's put some other formatting up here. We'll center across the area and then put a line under the uh, the cells. So that sets it apart a little bit. I'll also put a line under date and description as well. So we're going to start off with our transactions. Uh, we'll, as I mentioned before, we'll do April. 2020, although I probably won't worry about the year at this point, but oh, that's right. In Excel, you have to put the year or it'll mess up the dates. So I'll do April 1st of 2020. We're going to start by funding this organization. So start company. We're going to fund it with $500 of cash and we'll do, we're going to do a lawn mowing or yard service company and we'll start with, say, a lawn mower. Uh, that we're going to value at a thousand dollars. So that gives us two assets worth fifteen hundred dollars. That gives us equity of fifteen hundred dollars. Now, if you know debits and credits, um, all the credits are going to be negative numbers. That's why equity is a negative number. And that way, I can sum across and make sure everything balances. So if you don't know debits and credits, essentially think about it: assets are going to increase with a positive number. And anything that's the other side, if you're decreasing an asset, it's going to be a negative number. If you're increasing a liability or equity, that's going to be a negative number. Um, so that helps. So on the 15th, uh, we're going to purchase some more equipment uh, with a loan or purchase on account. So purchase uh, $1,500 of equipment with a loan of $1,500. Double run our checksum. I'm just going to drag this to the bottom so it's there for all the rest of my transactions. As you know, it should be zero, and it is. If it's not zero, that means I kind of messed something up, and I need to go back and figure out what usually my negatives or positives are messed up. So now on the 20th, we're going to have another transaction. We're going to mow the Jones yard. So got our first job. We're going to start mowing. We are going to bill them, so it is going to be receivable for $50, and we're going to record our sales at 50 Now, you'll notice I didn't put the negative in, so a checksum is wrong. So sales are coming as a negative because we have a receivable, which is an asset as a positive. So 
our credit to sales is in negative. Once I get that fixed, it zeroes out that checksum. Now, that happened on the 20th. Let's see, what else do I want to do? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up with a bunch of receivables as I mow yards or do work for other people. So over here on the side, I'm just going to record my different receivable accounts. So for instance, Jones is its own separate thing. I could have put this much detail in the main ledger, but if you end up with 15 or 20 different uh, accounts, that can get pretty overwhelming. So I, we're going to put it off to the side here, and it'll make sense how we use that here in a second. So now on April 20th, as you can tell, I messed up the date because I didn't put the year in. So put the year in, fix the date. Now we're going to collect uh, the Jones uh, bill. And that was $50 of receivables. So that's going to go away. They now paid us. And we got $50 of cash. So you see that all balanced out. I now go over here to my Jones receivable, show that the Jones receivable paid. So Jones now owes nothing. Now moving on. On, let's say, April 27th, I'm going to mow the Jones yard again for $50. So there's my receivable when I bill down, but they haven't paid me yet. Again, I get my sales of $50, which is ended as a negative because it's a credit or it's the other side of, a, of an asset. Uh, and then let's go down here on April 30th. I'm going to mow, let's say, the Smith's yard. So I mow the Smith's yard. They, oh, look at that. I forgot to put the $50 in the Jones receivable. So I went back and did that. Now, mowed the Smith's yard for $50 as well. I enter my $50 receivable, my sale, and then I add a column to receivable, kind of what we call a sub-ledger if you were accounting um, knowledge, but the sub-ledger for, for the Smith is now is $50. And then again on the 30th, I'm gonna purchase some gas and uh, other supplies. So purchase gas, oh look, I misspelled purchase equipment, fix that. Okay, go back. Uh, purchased gas and other supplies for $35. So I have $35 less cash. And we're going to put that under, let's see, put that under other expenses. So at $30, $35 of other expenses, that's a positive because it's an expense because cash is a negative. So going to wrap that up. So that's going to be the, my first one. Very Again, very few transactions. We have, what, seven transactions here. So I'm going to do um, kind of before adjustments total. Uh, depending on how you're doing your business, you might not need anything other than um, this amount per period. So before adjustments, I'm just going to go and sum up all of my columns. That gives me the total in each column. Now I'm going to make some adjustments. These adjustments... These are things that didn't have a specific transaction for, but still need to get recorded correctly in the financial statements. So uh, these are all going to happen on April 30th, at the end of the month, basically. It's kind of adjustments for the end of the month. So I'm going to depreciate my equipment. I am recording equipment as equipment, not just expensing it. So I'm going to depreciate that over time. Well, let's assume that my equipment has, let's say, four years, so 48 months, because I'm doing this on a monthly basis. And that gives me my depreciation for the year. I'm gonna multiply it by negative one just to give me a negative number. So roughly $52. So $52 is gonna be my depreciation. That is going to be an expense to me. So I've used up 58 or $52 worth of my equipment. So they're on now worth $52 less. That's the general idea this month. Put that in as an expense. The expense needs to be a positive because I'm decreasing an asset, which is negative, um, increasing expense, which is a positive or a debit in uh, accounting lingo. Some other things I'm going to do a note, remember, I have a loan. So on my loan is going to have interest expense that I haven't paid yet. So I don't know what the terms are on the loan, but we're going to assume it has some interest expense, which I haven't paid. So I'm going to make an adjustment for the interest expense. Again, a lot, if you're just doing a pure cash system, you wouldn't need to put a lot of these adjustments in there. Uh, I would still recommend doing depreciation, but the interest expense, if you're just doing a pure cash system, trying to track the money, just record it when you pay it. So there's our equipment loan uh, for 12 dollars um, that is an expense so it increases the amount of the loan and it 
creates an expense. So my final month end totals, just do another sum of those amounts. Now, I kind of, oh, I didn't, I left the formula in the equipment. So we're going to actually see that it's, okay, it's $52. We'll just put $52 and leave it as that. That'll give us close enough. Format everything for kind of dollars and cents. It just cleans it up and makes it look nice. So there are my month end totals. Cash of 515. Receivables of 100. And now these are my closing entries. So those are my month end totals, but notice I have $150 worth of sales and $99 worth of expenses. We're going to close those out. So I take sales and other expenses. I record the opposite as what's in there. That makes them zero. So my closing balances here should, my assets and liabilities should be the same except for equity, which should go up because I made money this period. And then my sales and expenses should go away. Oh, uh, misrecorded sales of 140 there, 150, that fixed it. Now my equity needs to go up to $51. Okay, $51 of basically income to me this month. And that gives me where I can start again. So my closing balances of cash receivables, equipment, um, and everything else. So that's what's going to transfer to the next month, and then I'll start again so I can keep my revenues and expenses going. Go over here. Uh, bring down my receivables, and then what I'm going to do, this is my transactions, I'm going to actually relabel this to April. Now, I'm doing it by month. You could just as easily do this by quarter or year. If you have very few transactions, just doing this yearly is going to be sufficient. You don't need to go in and create new tabs. But if you're in like the 200 transactions a month, you will probably want to have a separate tab for, for each month. If you only have, say, 200 transactions in a year, it doesn't make any sense. Just run it by the year, record it as you go. You'll have your year-end totals, and then create a new tab for the next year. So I've now created a tab for May. I'm going to take my closing balances from April, and those are going to be my beginning balances in May. So copy those, put them up in the first row. All I did was copy the whole April tab over to May, and now I'm moving my closing balances up to the start, calling them opening balances instead, and now I'm going to delete all the April stuff. So right-click, clear contents for all the April stuff. One thing to keep in mind, when I pasted the closing opening balances, I did a paste special and then pasted just the values. Otherwise, you paste the formula and uh, the formula is wrong because it's pulling from weird cells or errors out. So these are, you just click paste special and paste values and that gives you the actual numbers instead of the formula, which is the sum of the of lines above. So our closing balances now become our opening balances for May and we'll just repeat the same process. Uh, there it is. That's what it looks like, uh, all kind of laid out there. There's a number of tweaks you can make to this, add columns, uh, add rows. So you can go back here and format it a little bit just to help delineate some things. Uh, and you can expand this very extensively, I would say. Until you hit probably 150 or 200 transactions a month, you, uh, unless you need other functionality in the out-of-the-box systems like Quicken, this is probably just going to help you just as much as those would be in terms of making decisions. So, well, that pretty much wraps it up. I hope you've enjoyed this little tutorial on a very basic Excel-based accounting bookkeeping system. If so, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure you subscribe to see future content as we explore the world of accounting, finance, and business. And check out other accounting and finance-related content from Accounting Outside. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. God bless.